بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ومن اتبع هديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا جاي Well this video is specially for you uh, You have a, a journey with Islam starting from what? October? October October I will be listening and I will let um, all the audience and the people who follow me to listen to your journey in Islam. Uh, I'm very excited about it and I'm sure everybody will be excited about it, inshallah. You know, let me know, what, tell me when, when this happened and how did it start it. And we took the shahad, alhamdulillah, but yes. I want to see. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this all started for me around, I'd say, June of last year. Um, I got to a point where, you know, I was dealing with a lot of things in life, anxiety, health issues, um, just things that every uh, everyone else deals mm -hmm. with in life. Yeah, go ahead. But Sorry. Um, I was just looking for peace. I was looking for guidance. Um, again, I grew up with a Christian family. I grew up, you know, in a different standard of things. Um, even though I grew up with a Christian family, I wouldn't say I was religious, you know, I. I grew up that way because I had to grow up that way, not because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So Christianity wasn't something that I, you know, my heart like exactly followed and my heart was in, you know. Mm -hmm. So I never really felt religion in my heart. I turned 18 and that kind of all went away. Um, and now here I am, 27, and mm -hmm. I was just looking for guidance. I was looking for peace, something that I couldn't get through other means. And I found a group of people who I'm very blessed to have found. Um, and they kind of got me into Islam and they got me to discussing it and more researching it. And even then, I still wasn't. I was going to say, wasn't I was going to say, because, you know, mashallah, they teach you, they told you everything. And then you came to me and mm -hmm. I remember that. And then you said, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. Which is, I, I want to explain this to everybody because then a lot of people take the time and they debate mm -hmm. you know it's like uh first of all they feel like you know somebody's pushing them and he's like something hitting he's like you're pushing me yeah. but then you said you know what we agree in that day and you were sitting down here this you know in my spot yeah and he said you know what i need my time and you left and and then you reach out back to me yeah what make you reach out back to me? <laughs> um my anxiety got worse oh. um social pressure with things job family um things got worse and i was kind of at a breaking point and but you start to attend my friday service yeah that's um, what i remember you started to attend and you were like um starting listening to the first lectures and second lectures mm -hmm. did you find peace with that you didn't take the shahada at that time right oh i had taken the shahada before okay. prayers yeah okay mm -hmm. um i had taken the shahada and the, the the week before I attended the first oh, okay. Uh, prayer. Okay. Okay. Then you, you, you started to attend the, the prayer when you took the shahada. Yeah. Okay. And that was one of the things, um, the people that introduced me to Islam, they, you know, they talked to me about, you know, saying my shahada and getting up and, you know, they told me about like how good I would feel, you know, getting up in front of everybody at, at the masjid and, um, saying my shahada and getting all those greetings. But I was always so like, afraid and scared of that like mm -hmm. just standing up in front of this whole entire different world of things that i knew nothing about mm -hmm. you know i knew the basics but i didn't truly know yeah you know the way of being a muslim and things like that and it wasn't until around that time where i attended and you remember when i got you had me stand up in front of everybody and i just told everybody like i feel like this is my path like mm -hmm. i'm really happy to be here like this is the path that i want to be on in life like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Did the anxiety slow down? Did you yes, slow down. Yes, it slowed down. Um, through religion, it slowed down, and um, you know, I finally went to. <laughs> I got a better job. You know, start. Alhamdulillah. Th things started to open for. Yes, me. things started to open for me. Um, I got a better job. You know, I saw a doctor, a therapist. Um, you know, and. Through all those things, none of them got to me the way that prayer got to me. Yes. None yes. of those things, you That's know, attending your morning. attending your lectures on Friday, yes. the Quran Academy, yes. none of those things got to me the way that those did. Our meetings, our monthly meetings that we do, you know, hanging out with you, 
<laughs> outside of the magic. Those things, you know, were really important in getting me on the right path. And from the from the boy that I was last year to the man that I am today, I've truly gone through a transformation. And remember, one day you finished the prayers and you said somebody approached you and said, "How did you do that? I was born Muslim. And yeah, I the, couldn't feel what you are talking about and feeling. Yeah, what this this sentence, this gentleman." did give you did to you and make you feel it made me feel good um this was my first time attending prayer so mm -hmm. this i didn't know what i was walking into i didn't know what to expect i didn't know that i was going to get the welcome that i got you know um this brother he said came and sat next to me and he said you know brother like how does someone who was already born into a religion and then had no religion how did he find Islam? How did he feel Allah in his heart? Mm -hmm. He said, because I was born a Muslim, I grew up around this, and yet I don't feel it in my heart. Wow. And I said, it's different for everybody, but it's something that just comes to you. You know, back last summer when I visited you the, for the first time, it still wasn't in my heart. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you talked to me and you said you, you just knew that, like, I wasn't completely, ready, I wasn't yeah. completely there. I wasn't completely ready. And then I went through a transformation of things and... I accomplished so much. I mean, I accomplished so much in a month, you know, more than I did in three months. And that's something I told him. And I told other people this story. Um, I never thought I'd see him again. You know, I hope, you know, I did hope you see him again. Yes. A few weeks ago, he okay. was there. Good. He was there at your prayer. Um, second yeah. gentleman, he was there yeah. and I didn't get a chance to speak to him, yeah. but he was there. He was listening to you, mm -hmm. and that made me happy because I'm saying if I could, if someone like me can touch him, you know, a born Muslim, things like that, they can happen. Anymore. Sometimes the born Muslim, they have more stress and more pressure from the parent that pushed them. The non-Muslim, when they enter Islam, I think they have different pressure. Don't yeah. misunderstand because mm -hmm. we're going to get to that. Right, but. Uh, the, the young youth uh, that they are born in a Muslim family and they are living in the society here, they feel so pressure that they run away. Right. In the other hand, <laughs> the person who is not into Muslim family, he get to Islam, he get pressure a different way, but he is, doesn't feel the pressure that somebody's telling him, you need to do this, you need to pray, right. you need to this, you need to that. You get the different right. and you will talk about it. Mm -hmm. but. The first thing we told you, there was two different uh, approach. One people tell you, don't worry about it, don't pray and stuff like that. Yeah. And what? just talk to me about the prayers because we had a challenge with the prayer. Yeah. Um, right when I said my Shahada and I became Muslim officially, um, I, met a, I met a few people and, you know, a few people told me, you know, and I remember I came to you and told this, they were like, you know, take your time with everything, you know, don't rush saying, you know, if you don't get five prayers a day, it's fine. And I remember you like nip that right in the mind. You were like, no, 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 no. I don't want you because if you get on that habit, you're going to continue being on that habit. So I want you to start off right. I want you to pray five times a day. And that's the challenge you put me on. I remember the 30 day challenge, which I recommend to any new Muslims or Muslims that are, you know, uh, even Muslim that he born Muslim, born Muslims, converts, reverts, yes. anything. Like I recommend everybody to do this challenge because it was something that really stuck with me and it got me on the path. And you said it exactly right. You said you're going to get to a point where you feel like if you don't pray, something's going to be off with yep. your day. Yeah. And that's exactly how I felt. Good, good. And then it's just also it's it's a habit that it's switched to buy, become a worship. Yeah. You know, it's like you force yourself to be in a habit, like people who smoke and that, that got, you know, like it's to, totally different mm -hmm. comparison. But it, when you smoke and you, you, you stop smoking, you feel like you're missing something, like yeah. the nicotine in your body. Mm -hmm. But in the prayers, also when you get to start the habit of praying and then you stop or you miss one, you feel like something wrong. You're like something is not going the right direction yeah. and you have to run back. Right. I look at it as I looked at it as therapy in a way. It was my therapy. It was also the few minutes each prayer, you know, a few minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, however long anybody takes, that's you know, dependent on them and their personal relationship with Allah. But that was my time to thank Allah and ask him for anything that I wanted. And that's another thing that someone taught me. Um, because I had felt at a point where I was like, Is there ever such thing as too asking Allah too much? Yeah. And there's not, no. you know, there, it's good to be grateful for what he's given you mm -hmm. and you thank him. But at the same time, Allah has everything. 
Um, he can give you anything. So um, don't, that's one thing, never be afraid to ask him is, for whatever Is this you is want. your first, inshallah, we are very close to Ramadan, we are in Sha'ban. Yes. Is this is your first Ramadan? Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. And I had people who are going to get me through it. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's, it, you never fast before. No, I, I've, yeah. I've tested it out a few times. Test, oh, yeah, really? I have tested it out a few times. Yeah. So. Okay, but what's the biggest challenge? Because you know you're a convert, and, mm -hmm. and we we know that a lot of Muslims, a lot of non-Muslims enter Islam. What is the biggest challenge that you find it? And until now, it's still going. I know mm -hmm. that the Salah, you are actually in control a little bit, which yeah. is the Shaitan, the devil, will never let you, mm -hmm. you know, perfect it. Yeah. But you are at least it's in your grip right mm -hmm. now, right? Yeah. But what is the really difficulty? Even though it's in my grip. I would say for anybody that's still the toughest part, yeah, following the five prayers a day, mm -hmm. you know, if I didn't have you or if I didn't have the support system that I had, I don't think I would have been doing five prayers a day. I didn't have it for people that don't have that support system or they don't have somebody, you know, on them and making sure that they're doing it. That's another important thing. You have to have a strong structure and a strong circle around you. Otherwise, you can fall off. Not to say that everybody will, but you can fall off if you don't have a strong support system. And thankfully, I did have a strong support system around me. Until this day, I still have a strong support system, a strong support system around me. Um, that's one of the mo that's the biggest thing I'll stress. How about your family? Did did did, uh, did you get any challenge or? It wasn't a challenge. Um, I thought it would be, because that's a scary thing, you know. If you're a convert, that's a scary that can that can be a scary thing. Mm -hmm. um, telling your family, explaining to your family, especially if your family's already already belongs to one religion. Yeah. Um, so that was another thing in the beginning I was afraid about, but. Thankfully, I found strength in telling my family, and they, they were happy. they were happy for me. They accepted me right They're away. They're believers. They accepted. They understand. Another thing that helped me out is that I have a Muslim uncle. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah, so my grandparents who raised me, they yeah, familiar with they it. were familiar with it. Yeah, it's my grandmother's brother. He was familiar with it, or she was familiar with it. So this was nothing new for her. Mm -hmm. You know, she told me the only the only regret that she had is that she thought that I would I thought that she wouldn't accept me being Muslim, I see. you know, and that kind of hurt her soul a little bit, but, you know, we talked and she's really happy for me. Did you add new friends, Muslim, or did you lost old friends? Non I did not lose any old friends, no. Um, I made new friends, Muslim. yes, I made new friends Muslim, yes, good. Um, very good people. Um, when you text me a couple of days ago, you said about, I want to change my name. Yes. You know, where did this come from? Um. Where it came from, so my growing up, my uncle had changed his name. Mm -hmm. You know, his right, his uh, American name is Peter. His Arabic name is Kabil. Mm -hmm. He had changed his name. Um, thinking about it, when in the beginning, I didn't want to change my name, mm -hmm. but the more I learned and the more I got familiarized with things, I was like, you know what, I do want to change my name. Beautiful. Now, let me just highlight the, the and, you know, the behind it. Then people may not misunderstand that I'm not against it. Yeah. But. In Islam, the, you know, and the Prophet Muhammad taught us that, you know, when a person comes to, to take the Shahada mm -hmm. and enter Islam, is he, if his name uh, related to like, uh, you know, like uh, uh, idols or uh, religion mm -hmm. that uh, not faith, like right. they believe in Christianity, Judaism and Islam, mm -hmm. if it's out of that, like you're atheist, you know, like, yeah. uh, like God is and stuff like right. that, we recommend the Prophet Muhammad said, choose for your brother a name. Yeah. Then everybody work together to give a name uh, matching the personality mm -hmm. that that person have. Yeah. Uh, but if your name is not actually like offensive against yeah. Islam, it's not about gain, uh, against Islam, uh, then it's you're welcome to keep it because that's what your parents choose for you and that's right. what you're used to it. Right. But uh, you said I, you understand that, but yeah. you still want to change it because you feel like it's. You know, it's meaningful. It's meaningful yeah. for you. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any names in your mind? Yes. Or you want everybody to, to help you? To choose? Um, no, no, no. I have a name. I oh, have a name. Yeah. What did you do? Awesome. Qasim? Awesome. Awesome? Yes. Awesome. What does that mean? Uh, protector. Protect. Helper. Awesome. Okay. Writer. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, who helped you with that? It's like... That was a name I chose for myself. Okay. Yeah. 
That was something I found on my own. I did have a few people who uh, tried to recommend me a few names, <laughs> and I like them. I like those too, but that's the name I went with. Okay. Well, it's. A, a, I always say that you know, if the more you get into Islam mm -hmm. and the practice and understanding the the Sahaba companion and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the characters that they work so hard for for the Dawah in Islam, mm -hmm. then you feel like your personality is closer to that, yeah. and then you choose that. Mm -hmm. But if you are comfortable with that, then you're welcome to do that, you know. And another thing I would say, um, if you are a convert um, or a revert, um, a lot of things that people I know I've read about with converts is like, you know, previous weekend before, if they ate pork or if they drank alcohol, yeah. you know, those are things that they struggled with when they did convert. And funny enough, that was something I didn't struggle with because I never, I didn't like pork. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy pork ever growing up. Mm -hmm. um, alcohol, I was a social drinker, not a heavy drinker, so. That, that was, was easy for you yeah, to. since saying my shahada, I've not taken a sip of alcohol. Yeah. Um, those are the other big things that I feel like people could struggle with potentially, but you want to do things right. Mm -hmm. You want to do things for Allah. You want to do things right in, in the name of our religion. So that's things that I would tell people, strive every day to perfect. You know, we're, none of us are perfect, yeah. but strive to be. You know, strive to be as good as we can be, as good as Allah will allow us to be. Then Islam seems like it changed a lot in, in your personality and your feeling and the way, you know, everything around you and open doors for you for a new job yeah. and career and stuff like yeah. that. Do you, do you, do you uh, feel that somebody uh, can, can have the struggle like what, what, you, what you get mm -hmm. uh, if they are not having the support, the masjid and the imam and the family that they helped you? you know absolutely yeah absolutely then, it's know, just i got blessed with that support system mm -hmm. not everybody may not every not everyone might get that support system yeah and you have to dig deep yeah it's it's a fault also for the masajid and the imam and i i agree with that because we get a lot of people to enter islam but then we don't see them after that Mm -hmm. uh, we, yes, we give a and that's, a, that's another them. thing. We should yeah. strive to keep up with these yes. people so that they're not alone in their journey. Yes, through this video, I am you know, sending the message clear to everyone who took the Shahada mm -hmm. uh, in Stafford and Masjid Aliyah that they reach out and we're going to do like a, like in Ramadan iftar. Yeah. One day, all of them show up and uh, we can have iftar together and we see who is in challenge and who is uh, suffering and mm -hmm. who, you know, who like saying, you know what, this is, was a very wrong move, or this mm -hmm. is, was the best move for me. The, this way we can help each other, right? Right. Yeah. Then it's just, it's uh, in Islam, to strive to the right path it, by yourself is very hard. It's very difficult. It's, it's, it's very exactly. difficult. It can be done, but it is very difficult. And that's why, again, we should strive to make sure we're keeping up with these people, people that just converted, you know. Again, the way that you kept up with me and others kept up with me, you know, if I didn't have that strong support system, I wouldn't be where I am today. Honest to God, I would not be. I, I pray that uh, the, the attention that you get, I pray that the, the rest that they convert and they enter the Islam with us, they reach out. The problem, some of them, uh, they are not attending as you attend. You, yeah. you actually make it easy on me because you were every Friday in the masjid. Mm -hmm. The others, they, they're working. Yeah. And which get to the point of working. Did Islam affect your job? Did anybody give you a hard time for no, 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 no. That was a that was a point I made with my job. Um, that because you know it's my religion, I need to be there. That was one of the things I didn't want to have to go to where it was. Oh, I can't make it on Fridays. Let me see if I can. Maybe I can get every other Fridays. Like I strive to get every Friday. To where That's helped you a lot. Yes. See, you help yourself. You help the Imam. You help the community because I have a lot of Muslims that they are not able to get out on Friday, mm -hmm. then they are disconnect yeah. with the da'wah, with the Islam, with the recharging the battery. Mm -hmm. Friday, this lectures, is a recharging a battery for every single one. Yeah. You know, you, like exactly, you have your phone and you charge it because the battery is low. Friday is the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't show up on Friday, you are not recharging your Iman. Correct. And that's why we're losing a lot of people. Yeah. And the first, some of them, the ignorant, they don't know that they can go to their boss and say, listen, my religion Friday, I need one hour break, I want, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to come to the farthest masjid. You can go any masjid closer to you. Did you try other masjid and other lecture or you were yeah. stuck with me? No, 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 no. I tried, um, 
I had a friend who introduced me to the um, Woodbridge Fix Center. Good. Yeah, and that was really good. That was really good. I liked them, but um, on a spiritual level, you benefit me the most. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Well, I feel, I, I, feel just, honored. <laughs> I, co I connected with you the most. Again, the other one was great. I enjoyed it. I'm thankful for those people that I've met there, but being at the mashup with you on Friday, that, that is my piece. I enjoy being there. Wow. I will continue, inshallah, to be there every Friday. Alhamdulillah. And that's exactly where I want to be every wow. single Friday. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you and for everyone, inshallah, to continue the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to find the peace as you did and to uh, get over like the struggle and the stress that you went. Okay. I remember, and I will tell this everyone, I remember the first day that he came and you were losing it <laughs> you know you, you have no like you have anxiety stress uh, uh, and now mashallah and i cannot believe it i believe it definitely and i know and i lived it but all this because your faith and your connection was allah subhanahu yes. ta'ala right yeah then you know i know that um, a lot of people will ask questions and oh, hopefully we can make another you know video for that mm -hmm. and we can let everybody uh, ask questions how did you do this and all the stuff but i want to uh, end it by you saying something out there to your generation i know you said you're 27 now yes well i'm a little bit like two years <laughs> older than you <laughs> then you know tell your generation about religion mm -hmm. people who born muslim and people who are actually interested in islam or thinking about islam um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's the first thing. Take that first step as I did. That first step will lead you down to 10 steps and then to 20 steps and then the 30 steps and so on. When you do convert, when you do get closer to your religion, go the extra mile with your prayers. Don't just do, you know, the mandatory five prayers. Take it a step further and you will be rewarded as I've been rewarded. Again, don't just do the five prayers. You know, I know there's people that struggle with doing two to three but make it a point to get your five in and go that extra mile and trust in God for anything and everything. Put your problems. That was one of the main things that I didn't do. I didn't put my problems into his hands. Yeah. I didn't put my problems into his hands. You know, I had excuses for everything that was going wrong, you know, whether it be my anxiety or job or health. Instead of, instead of, you know, I don't want to sound, you know, for people who are still going through those type of things, you know, but put those problems into his hand and trust into him as I did. Yeah. That would be the main thing that I would say. You know, you, I said that you were going to end it, but I mean, we, we just, I want to highlight on something. You said the most important thing is don't give up and also pray. This is your connection with Allah subhanahu yes. wa ta'ala. This is the path that will open the door for you. Your generation, you know, a lot of people struggling with anxiety and depression and lost and they don't think about the future no. and i'm saying clearly loud and clearly because i i talk to them and they tell me i don't know what i'm gonna do i don't know what i uh, what is waiting for me i don't have any hope for tomorrow did you went through that yes you did oh, absolutely you went through absolutely that. the no hope for tomorrow was on my mind every day along with my anxiety you know the pressure of what am i going to do with my life uh, those did, are things did you get panic attacks and... yes absolutely yes. when was the last panic attack yeah, since you took the shahada <laughs> since i took the shahada i have not, not had a thing a lot yes i've not Allah. had a panic attack do i deal with a little bit of anxiety every day absolutely that's normal that's human you're gonna continue but compared to what i dealt with before i sent my shahada to what i deal with now is i mean zero to a hundred mashallah mashallah may allah continue your to to protect you and uh, may Allah uh, save the the rest of humanity inshallah and may Allah protect you from the MVIs and the jealousy <laughs> <laughs> because you know it's hard yeah. it's hard for people who are born in a Muslim family born in a Muslim country mm -hmm. and here we are not a Muslim country but we are blessed because we have the freedom of religion and speech uh, but alhamdulillah and your your you, everybody support you family support you yes. your masjid support you your neighbor your your friend your friends mm -hmm. the, i ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everybody out there get the same support that you get inshallah and get rid of the anxiety and i'm not be ignorant to saying oh anxiety will be just with a prayer no you no it you takes had a lot of steps you had therapy you yes. you 
you give me a hard time, <laughs> you, you had meetings with me monthly and all mm -hmm. stuff like that, you went to the masjid, you, you asked for a day off for Friday or an hour, two hours, you did your job, that's why you go forward to Allah, Allah comes all the way to you. Yes. You step toward Allah, Allah will direct all the assistance for you. Then may Allah guide you, inshallah, and um, hopefully we can launch that and people can give their opinion, inshallah, and share with us, inshallah. Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.